Behind the Notes, the official Music Notes podcast. Conversations with professionals throughout the music industry. With your host, Lucas Kaler. President Kathleen Marsh. <laughs> so mm-hmm. thank you for doing this. We really appreciate you doing this. We're so glad to have you. Thank and you. I mean, we're in your building. This is your your kingdom here. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, so you told me before you were president, or excuse me, you're currently president. But what was your title prior to that? Yes. Uh, when I started, I, I'm a co-founder. Co-founder. So I, right. I started the business uh, okay. with two other computer programmers okay. who have since left. Sure. Uh, they retired. And um, I started out as director of marketing. Okay. Uh, moved on to being the co-president. Oh, okay. uh, then it, uh, I became the CEO. Did that mm-hmm. for 22 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, took a short break and am now back as president. Okay. So as president, do you think you'll be doing a lot of similar things as you did when you were CEO? Or is this more of a... Uh, you're doing more designation now, do you think? No, I, I you know, the company has uh, changed, yeah, you know, sure. over the years. Mm-hmm. It's always changing. Everything changes. Sure. And I think that, you know, what I can bring back is um, some entrepreneurial energy. Oh, cool. Yeah, I think that the, the company has done very well. You know, we've grown nicely. Yeah. Um, but the dynamics of the market and the business have changed yeah. and uh, we're coming back and shaking a few things up and mm-hmm. and putting some again entrepreneur entrepreneurial energy like that back into the company yeah, I like that term and I, I I would imagine when you were founding it that was probably what it was all founded upon was entrepreneurial no, energy. no it was it was founded upon uh, uh, a lot of uh, vision you know yeah, we, sure. we had a, a idea of what we wanted to do mm-hmm. uh, and had no idea how hard it was going to be I if that. I think most op- entrepreneurs would say this that if mm-hmm. they knew how hard it was going to be they never would have done sure. it. Uh, but once Especially you're in, in it, you do music. it. I mean, especially in sheet music, because it's, there's been dominant players for, what, the last century. Mm-hmm. How many sheet music companies have popped up in the mm-hmm. last 20 years, yeah, 25 we were, years? Yeah, we were a disruptive force. I bet, I yeah, bet. Yeah. So it was founded in 98 was when... That's the doors officially opened, essential, right? Essential. But we had the idea for the company uh, in the mid '90s. Oh, okay, sure. So, and we were working on it. We actually okay. wrote a business plan um, and incorporated in '98. Mm-hmm. But we had been working on uh, the idea and the business before that. Okay. Yeah, and and I came from the brokerage industry. I was right. a stockbroker uh, before I was uh, in the music business, okay. and um, and that was in Milwaukee. That was in Milwaukee, okay, right. right? Sure. And so, you know, I knew how to raise money. And yeah. So my big... my part that the, that I played in the business was um, helping write the business plan and raising money okay. and doing the the business side of uh, starting Music Notes. Mm-hmm. And the two programmers were the geniuses sure. uh, that worked on the software. And that was all in Madison? It's always been in Madison, is that correct? It's been in Madison. Okay. Right, right. Okay. We're a spinoff from a very uh, high-end classical publisher okay. named AR Editions. So did you and the, the other two founders meet through AR Editions? We did. Or? Okay. We did, okay. yes. Yeah, I, well, I worked, um, actually, I worked for a magazine for a couple of years. Um, oh. I, I founded a, a trade magazine, and that's oh, where I, I learned- that. Yeah, that's that's, cool. that's where I learned how to love publishing, you know, and and I, I wanted to stay in publishing, and mm-hmm. Wisconsin doesn't really offer a lot of opportunity uh, in that area, so oh, I, I was looking for a position, and I found an opening mm. in a small music publisher here in Madison. Oh, okay. So I, I we'll- drove... 75 miles each way from Milwaukee. Oh, so you were living in Milwaukee. I was, okay. just just to do this job. And oh. my husband thought I was crazy. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> probably. And you, you already had kids at that point? Or I, no? did, you I did, I did. And I went so. through a lot of cars. Oh, I bet, probably. <laughs> yeah. We had yeah. an editor here who used to commute from, oh gosh, the darn near Dubuque. And so I know he went yeah. through a lot of cars <laughs> doing that. Um. Okay, so you were working for AR Editions. What was the position? Was it marketing there? Yeah, it was okay. marketing and um, production. Okay. I, I, it, it was kind of a fun job because yeah. um, I worked with uh, book publishers around mm-hmm. the country and learned 
the the art and science of music publishing and oh, okay. from start to finish i mean we did everything from you know all of the editorial the copywriting mm -hmm. the editing uh and even the physical production okay. of, of making a book so oh, cool. it was it was a fun job I and bet. that's where i met uh, the two programmers that co-founded the business sure walter okay. burt and tom hall i know now i when i first started it, my first day was literally Walter's last day. I, I oh, think so. Wow. We had a great big retirement party for him. Right. And you know how uh, uh, the big boss man, Tim, he makes everybody sing on their first day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was Except the very me. First. Except me. He came after we, me. So oh, I, I missed that embarrassment. Oh, yes. super funny. Yeah. Oh, came after you, meaning you were here first. Yes. You didn't have to do it. <laughs> Well, really, I was the first one had to introduce myself that day, and I had no clue this was coming. And I'm not a singer or anything. So yeah. uh, my deflection was I made everyone sing for He's a Jolly Good Fellow for Walter on his way oh, out the door. Oh, smart. Uh, that's what I was smart. thinking. You know, had a big sing along and everything. Yeah, and so that's why you're here. You're smart. Right, exactly. <laughs> Thanks for noticing. I appreciate it. Oh, that's funny. Um, okay, so you, Walter, and Tom were working together at AR Editions. Right. Did you all just quit at the same time and then start doing this? Did you do it as an affiliate, start Music Notes as an affiliate to that? No, we spun it off. You spun it yeah, off. Yeah, okay. we all did. Right. And, you know, we left our jobs. We officially left our jobs with okay. AR Editions when we incorporated. We mm. became the first three employees of Music oh, Notes okay. in 1998. Sure. Um, and... Then we we continued writing the business plan. Mm -hmm. uh, we had no money, and oh, so we yeah. you know we started raising money, okay. and that was my area because sure. of my background. And um, they started you know designing the the database, mm -hmm. designing the the you know software, you know, just doing everything that needed to be done, right, sure. you know, to make it possible to sell music on the internet. that's got to be set up first before you can get it any, was anything published. You have to have massive, the infrastructure. Massively difficult. It was all invention. Right. Nothing existed. So we made it that's all up. Something that I had heard was, and maybe you were the one talking about it, that it not, it wasn't necessarily, the intention wasn't necessarily to publish sheet music. It was to work with technology to help with learning music? The, yeah, or? the original idea was, you know, we saw the opportunity for making music interactive. Okay, okay. So you could see it, you could hear it, you know, you could manipulate it. Okay. And Tom Hall especially, you know, thought that our opportunity was to um, allow people to learn how to read music using these enhancements right. that were available, you know, with new technology. Okay. And Walter Bird actually was a pioneer in the area of MIDI development. Really? Yeah. So oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. That's he's so cool. He, so we had, you know, a lot of, you know, technical uh, expertise to bring to the table. Yeah. But, you know, as it turned out, uh, it was very difficult sure. to use technology uh, to teach people how to read music. Mm. And the need appeared uh, to provide, you know, inter access to sheet music, mm. you know, easily. It right. was very hard to get sheet music if you go to the store and buy it. Yeah, I suppose. Because you know? really probably ordering it, I mean, ordering it online probably didn't even really exist at that point. Right. Well, well, it was starting to. And when oh. we started, we didn't have any licenses and, and you know, oh, the man. the... And, you know, our website, you know, was limited in terms of selection. Sure. And so we actually offered books. We were like oh, Amazon okay. at the oh, time. Oh, like physical Yeah, physical books. books. Yeah, oh, okay. you, you could buy books on Music Notes What was Notes the repertoire also. like? I mean, classical music? Had had you started venturing into pop already or where did yeah, you start? We did. Okay. We did because we, our first license was with um, Warner Publications oh, okay. down in Miami Lakes when so, they were owned by Warner Chapel. One. Yeah, right. sure. That's right. So. One. We had they had a pretty good catalog and oh, okay. uh, we had that inventory okay. and so we put that online. But uh, we had to go out and get a license from all the, the other publishers, and that was mm. exceedingly difficult. That is one that I'm I've been very curious about. How do you even go about soliciting getting getting the licensing? I mean. You just start cold calling people. I guess you know it was a deal <laughs> no. in stocks. You probably did a lot of that. No, no, no. What we did is uh, we engaged a top copyright attorney in New York. Oh, okay. And, and here's like a funny story. Tom yeah. Hall had a very good friend. Uh, he worked at Princeton, and mm -hmm. he he met a guy at Princeton. 
um, who was a conductor, mm -hmm. and he was a conductor for um, the Vatican. You know, oh, the, really? the, the Pope's Orchestra. Oh, my God. Yes. That's a good gig. I yeah, it's seriously. a pretty good gig. It's a pretty good gig. Uh -huh. And and this guy uh, told Tom, you know, Tom, you know, you're going to get into the copyright business mm -hmm. and you need a really good copyright attorney. Yeah. And I know somebody in New York you should talk to. And it turned out that um, the attorney that helped this conductor do all of the legal work you know, for the Vatican gig that he had, mm -hmm. um, was the person that helped us with licensing. Okay. So it, it, he already had contacts or he yeah, just he had, knew everybody. Like, I guess probably. Yeah. He yeah, knew so. everyone. And so the first thing he did is he took me to France, uh, oh, really? yeah, to, uh, uh, trade, um, uh, event sort of like the Cannes Film Festival, but it oh, was okay. called Meet em. It was okay. it was the music version of the film festival in Cannes, oh, okay. and so he took me there and set up appointments and introduced me to everybody in the industry. Wow! Oh, it's what great. A, that's a hookup. That's a connection yeah. right there. Seriously. Yeah. Well, and I mean, no, whatever aspect of the music industry, who you know, you know it's who who, you, who know. you know and who you can meet. It seems like that's still true today. It seems even with all the it's true everywhere, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. So that was technically dot com era, I suppose. Then the it was. 90s. It was. Yeah, it was just starting to explode. Pets okay. dot com was the big deal. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> well, and so how many did not survive that era? You oh, know, how many? A lot. I, I, I mean, we had a, a competitor percent. that came in from France. Mm -hmm. It was called Net for Music, and they raised thirty million dollars and came out gangbusters. Okay. And in fact, I think I still have a mouse pad somewhere at the front that oh, says Net. For music, <laughs> on it, right? they were sending you know mouse pads and all all this merch out you know to everybody okay. and making a big splash, spending a lot of money on marketing. Mm -hmm. um, and you know we were very quiet. We were just doing our our thing here in Madison, you know, behind the scenes, just building mm -hmm. out good technology. Sure. And they were all marketing and all flash, and you know we were just the opposite. We were you know, technology based. Sure. And focusing and on the substance. They they the blew content. through thirty million dollars pretty Are fast. You kidding me? And disappeared. Oh no. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Where'd they get that money? Same uh, kind of thing, investors. Yeah, investors. Yeah, yeah everybody. Sure. There was money galore, you know, for dot com. Well, I suppose yeah, I guess there were so many people doing well with it. Yeah. I bet a lot of people were kind of lining up. Excuse me. <clears throat> so, okay. So when did the company start actually gaining traction? I mean, you were saying that it was kind of, I've heard some stories about the early 2000s even. <laughs> It was Which horrible. We don't have to get too deep, but I'd love to hear about it. Some it things. was it was painful. Yeah, yeah, really. We didn't make money for four years. Yeah, Golly. we lived off investment money for four uh -huh. years. Uh -huh. Yeah, and the the biggest problem was uh, licensing. You know, it just oh, took a long time. Sure. And uh, you know, all of the the music publishers, they didn't really understand what we were doing. You know, it, uh, we okay. thought we'd come in, you know, with the better mouse trap, and people would see it and and just flock to it yeah. and that wasn't the case at all really no oh, that's no that's too bad um so but in in the early 2000s it was still print or had you started offering uh online the way that we do it now like you can yeah buy it, it was our first our first sale um was from uh, somebody in i think south carolina and she bought a song called Angels Among Us. Okay. I know yes. the song. I do know the song. Yeah. yeah. And we just went crazy. Like, Aww. oh, my God, we sold something. I suppose. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. And then it took about five days for us to sell oh, no. the, the second piece of music. <laughs> so you're just sitting around at that point going, <laughs> waiting, okay. Waiting. Oh, yeah. That's kind of funny. Yeah. It's not like those, you know commercials where they show somebody, you know, turning on their computer and, sure. you know, the business explodes. Yeah. No, ours was, was slow to develop. I bet. Yeah. I, you've got to have nerves of steel, I think. You nerves. know, playing with that kind of money, waiting to see what happens, doing your, your due diligence, yeah. doing your work and hoping for the best. Many sleepless nights. I bet. Yeah. I bet. Were you, were you doing something else at the time? for money on the side or all no. your eggs were in this basket all my all the oh eggs were in goodness. one basket oh my goodness yeah it was do or die yeah, yeah it was really? it was very 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 risky yeah. yeah i believe it i mean really i'm pretty impressed with the venture particularly at the time and uh so 
being a woman in finance, particularly as a stockbroker, you were doing that in the 90s or 80s? Uh, that was in uh, the late 80s. Late 80s, yeah. So, I mean, they make movies about that stuff now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what what, what did, did you feel that, what, what, what was that like? What were the hurdles like? You probably were quite a minority, I would think. Uh, there were 75 brokers in our office uh -huh. and three women. Oh, and goodness. one of those women was really not a full broker, was more of an assistant. Really? So, yeah, there were two of us. Okay. So, you, yeah. I mean... Well, okay, so what was the climate like? Were, were they pretty accepting of that? Or? No, in fact, when I interviewed mm -hmm. for the job, um, the, the guy who interviewed me left the office and another vice president mm -hmm. came in the room, shut the door, and said, I'd like to speak to you mm -hmm. about something. And I thought, you know, what's this about? Sure. And he said... I'm going to deny I'm telling you this, but I want to tell you that you should probably go and look for another job, that this environment is going to be very difficult on you. Mm -hmm. You will not be treated fairly. You are not going to be given advantages like the, the men are given. Right. And my, you, you seem like a bright young woman. And my advice to you is to go into a different industry mm -hmm. where you can do better. Really? And, is, and it was just purely because you're female. That was the whole Yeah, that was it. argument there. Yeah, and and then he walked out. Really? And I think he would, thought he was doing me a favor. Sure. You know, I thought yeah. and it's an odd form but, of like But 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 I was outraged. I oh, thought, sure. you know, I thought, yeah, okay, fine, watch me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, good. So I became rookie of the year. Um, Did you really? I was, yeah. Oh, wow, that's yeah. what I'm talking but about. But I, I worked really, really, really hard. I would imagine. I probably yeah. worked about, you know, three times as hard as as everybody else. Really? And yeah, it, mm. it was a grind. Sure. He was in a way he was right. No, I, I again, I could. I mean, you hear the stories about the climate in those industries at the time, and you were not. You were in an office rather than on like a trading floor or something. Yeah, right? yeah. Okay. It was just I was a retail broker. Yeah. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. sure. I only kind of know the differences. Yeah. I had an uncle who was a stockbroker uh, in Chicago, so that's. Yeah. But again, most of what I know is from like the movie Trading Places yeah. or something. But what's interesting <laughs> about that job mm -hmm. is that um, I was on I think like the thirty third floor okay. uh, of the uh, high rise in in Milwaukee, mm -hmm. and. I was on the same floor as the research department. Oh, okay. And every morning I'd come to work and, you know, I would read the Wall Street Journal and, mm -hmm. you know, just look at, you know, what was going on in the industry. And then I would get a cup of coffee and I'd walk over into the research department mm -hmm. and talk to the analysts to see, you know, oh, sure. give me a good idea. Because, smart. you know, my job was to sell stock you yeah. know, to people. So I wanted a good idea. And nobody really treated me that well. I was mm -hmm. sort of an annoying you know, oh, young, yeah, sure, young sure. broker. I mean, that's ambition, though, you know. Yeah. But the only one who was nice to me mm -hmm. and who treated me well was Tim Ryland. Oh, the big and, boss man. <laughs> <laughs> and so we worked on the same floor and okay. I got to know Tim. And I always thought, you know. He's okay. Yeah, I didn't know? realize you two went that far back. We go, we go way back. That's amazing. That's where I met Tim. For, for people who don't know, Tim is our current chairman of the board. He's CEO, yeah, he's now CEO. He's right. now CEO. Because and and he, the chairman of the board. And I'm okay. vice chair. Right. Oh, okay. I didn't yeah. realize. Yeah, because he sort of, he was in a, a semblance of retirement and he's also come back yeah, recently. He, yeah, he's uh, he moved to Arizona. You right, know, I knew he was down he's there. got out of the cold, out of the Wisconsin. I don't, I don't blame him. I will weather. say I enjoy the Nashville it's weather. pretty smart. Yeah, sure. Yeah. No, I don't blame him there. Um, but well, we go way back. Okay. Yeah, okay. and then he left um, to start another company. He, mm. he w took off with a couple people, you know, and uh, they started a company called Cleary Gull Ryling McDevitt. Um, okay. And he was very successful in doing that. So he's an entrepreneur. Sure. Um, and then he sold that business at very much the same time that I was trying to raise money ah, for Music okay. Notes. Mm -hmm. And so I heard through the grapevine that he had 
you know, sold the business mm -hmm. and he was maybe looking for something else to do. And okay. I approached him with the idea and he became an early investor. Oh, that's so cool. Now, he, was he involved in administration in the beginning or he was purely an investor? A, an investor in the beginning, but then he, he because of the amount of investment, he mm -hmm. was on our board. And oh, then, then he got very involved about a year and a half or two years in. Okay. Okay, yeah. sure. Well, so that kind of leads me back to where we left off thinking about this as a timeline. You know, we were doing uh, late 90s, early 2000s. Uh, so it sounds like by early 2000s, Tim was pretty heavily yes. involved at that yes. point. Okay. Yes. So you sold a piece of sheet music. Then what? <laughs> <You know? laughs> then what? <laughs> Anything happen after that? Or? No, I'm really curious as to when it picked up. It's such a successful company at this point. Right. Is, was there a tipping point that you could pinpoint? Was Or it was an evolution? Or? No, I think that what happened was that, um, you know, people, just, you know, the public mm -hmm. started to realize that, you know, buying online, you know, was a yeah. convenient way, you know, to, to get product. Super convenient. Yeah. Super. So we, we were very early. We, okay. we actually started the company before iTunes. Really? Yes. I didn't realize that. Was Amazon around selling books it, at that it point? just was started. Okay. I assume so. And that I think sounds right. Jeff Bezos did very well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. He saw. Well, it sounds like you, you, you kind of saw the same opportunity that he saw. We though. did, you, we did, yeah. and, and and actually, we would look at Amazon and say, you know what, you know, let, let's look at what they're doing and how they're doing it, right. and you know, let's think big, even though we're in a small market. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Well, and he expanded out to everything else, and you all right. kind of almost yeah. narrowed in, you know, right. focused in on this, right? Um. So yeah, so what was what was uh, mid two thousands, late two thousands like then? Well, I, I guess it's hard to pinpoint in memory. Yeah, but. <laughs> I'm just trying to think think it through. I mean, we just you know we're grinding away at licensing. Yeah. You okay. know, licensing that was, was probably pretty critical. I would think it was. You know, in the, the in the beginning, the you know, our biggest challenge was technical. You know, and there was an yeah. enormous amount of investment okay. in in the technical side of the business. Um, but then we built that out and then licensing became a huge issue. And mm -hmm. so we focused on licensing. And then, you know, once we got those those in place, then we went back to technical, okay. you know, and there's when we started, we had our software on computers. They were sun systems oh, really? uh, because our software was so, so big. That, sure. you know, regular computers, you know, couldn't handle the software. I suppose, And yeah. so we were on these old sun systems mm -hmm. and they started to become outdated. You know, yeah. the technology changed. And so then we had to transition our, our technology to modern platforms. And, okay. and and that goes on to this day. I mean, as you know, we're mm -hmm. working now, you know, very, very hard on a major, major Yeah, you know, we're kind technical. of right in the middle of... That infrastructure sort of upgrade exactly right. I, i'm so excited when we get that all completed no, and our me tech, too. tech team has just been working day and night grinding this out trying to get that all updated but once we're there yeah. because the technology is available now f to to house all the information that we have to, right. to to keep our databases functioning properly and uh to do it more efficiently but the transition is unreal. it's painful oh, it, yeah. yeah and it, but it always has been you know well, that, sure. that's I've been through this before. Yeah, I bet. yeah, many times, mm -hmm. and you know, it's always slower than you want it to be, more expensive right. than you want it to be. You know, more frustrating, but mm -hmm. um, you, you just have to keep current. Right, you have to do exactly. it exactly. So, when did when did the tech department start growing from for the company? Well, we we were I big it was Tom in the beginning. Yeah, no, yeah, we had like thirty people in the beginning. Really? Um, yeah, we we spent. I don't know if I, I should say this, but uh -huh. we had a burn rate of about $200,000 a month. That We were spending Are massive amounts of money. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah, we were. It, it was high risk. Takes it to make it. Yeah, that is high risk. That's <laughs> super high risk. Yeah. But and, it is. It's that kind of, that kind of, uh, those guts that, you know, can pay off. Right. And then, but then we ran out of money and sure. then we had to scale back. Okay. And then we, we, you know get a new in infusion of funds and mm. then you know we hired some people back and then it happened again with the dot com meltdown yeah 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 you when know, was that i that was, was I like was still... early 2000 okay that's what i thought it was yeah, a yeah. disaster oh, yeah I bet. I bet. and the investment money just dried up <sighs> uh, so then we had to scale back again sure 
and then we grew. And so there's been ebbs and flows in the business mm -hmm. over time. Mm -hmm. So oh, that's wild. But I mean, we're in the 25th year here, it sounds 25th like. So I year. mean, that's something to celebrate, especially looking at coming through that dot com era, looking at all the infrastructure and the technological changes that the companies had to keep up with. Not to mes mention the, the industry itself, the major players are what, 70, 80, 90, 100 years old? I mean, right. what new sheet music publishers have even come onto the scene in the last 50 years? Yeah, there, none. Yeah, I wouldn't think so, really. <laughs> no. And fortunately, you know, we have, you know, I'm, I'm like, let me tell you about the company here. We have a lot of good connections with with the other publishers you know we're on good terms with them for the most part it yeah seems. it's a small it's a very small industry we right. all know each other you know right, we exactly. all you know we all you know in some ways collaborate mm -hmm. in other ways we compete sure but it, it's friendly competition oh, and you know my attitude is you know the rising tide all boats rise you know in a rising right. tide you know we the the issue now that we're dealing with is music education you know mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. covid was really difficult difficult time yeah. because kids were out of school you know the music lessons you know were interrupted mm -hmm. um i think that you know there's just a fundamental change in education yeah be because yeah. of covid especially right. music education mm -hmm. you know and so there's a gap you know that we're dealing with where mm -hmm. kids maybe weren't taking lessons the way they were and so we're we're working hard as a company you know, thinking about music education and, sure. and, you know, helping, you know, using our, our website and our technology mm -hmm. and our, our, just the intelligence that we have in the company, yeah. you know, to, to grow the market. Right. Right. Well, and that's, what's nice. We have so many people that here have, that have worked in any facet of music. So we've got a lot of performers. We have tons of people who have worked as educators. I, I taught for about 10, 15 years. I mean, yeah. I, I taught private lessons and I toured and everything. And um, I, I see how many different ways we can use that expertise to help support other people trying to learn how to do that, you know, and, and, and uh, develop. When you talk about education, you know, we've been going through and trying to pick out all the best new stuff. You know, we want the fun stuff for kids, but we also want them to be able to learn something from that. You know, we've been having these meetings all week trying to figure new ways to uh, mm -hmm. engage the kids. And I remember, particularly when COVID hit, I was working as an editor, our vocal ensemble stuff just tanked. Right. And it's because people Nobody couldn't get sang. together. Yeah, yeah, they couldn't get together and sing. It was horrible, it was terrible. It feels like it's coming back, but it doesn't feel like it was necessarily as, as strong as it was before. Um, yeah, and, you know, the, the other thing that, that we have, mm -hmm. and it's been in some ways part of our DNA, because mm -hmm. we came from a very classical and high-end publisher, right. we've always been very conscious of quality, yeah, you know, really sure. high, high, high quality uh, arrangements, mm -hmm. you know, and notation. And, you know, there's in the marketplace now, you have a lot of user generated product. Yeah. There's a lot of, Lots frankly, of junk out there, you know, and, know. Um, you know, that has in some ways um, degraded the market. Yeah, really. Ugh. And it, it's, it is what it is. Yeah. For you know, sure. but, you know, I think that what, what we have in the company is still that that standard of excellence, yeah. you know, that it's just, it's in our DNA. It's right. not going to go away. And for serious students, serious educators, mm -hmm. you know, serious performers, uh, hopefully they can uh, rely on us you know, to provide them with quality. Right, exactly. And that's why we want to do more, so much more outreach and, and try and, and help bring the awareness to the repertoire that we can provide, mm -hmm. you know, and the support that we can provide. That was always one of the things I loved about war, uh, buying sheet music for music notes before I worked here was the interactive part. You know, we talked about the mm -hmm. interactive technology, um, how well the, you could utilize the MIDI to practice along with. You can change your tempos. You can, you can set your, uh, uh, your time, all the different keys that are offered, things like that. I mean, that's so, so helpful when you're trying to practice. Mm -hmm. um, I remember doing my undergrad. I had to do classical music left and right. I was terrible at it, <laughs> you know. But I also had to, if I needed a recording, I had to go buy it. You know, I, it wasn't all on YouTube yet. It wasn't all on Spotify right. yet, which however you feel about 
how people get paid from those platforms. It is helpful if you're trying to oh, learn it's super your music. Helpful. Yeah, yeah. Super, I mean, super it's helpful. just wonderful. I, right, you know, sure. the explosion of music is great. Mm -hmm. You know, and yeah. people are now, you know, able to practice and and find many different ways. Yeah. You know, to enhance you know, their, their experience. Right, right. Yeah. And so, you know, we're just in the mix, yeah, you know, yeah. and we just want to try to, you know, be as um, useful as possible. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, exactly. So I want to know why music, why did you pick music? I know you have a bit of a history and we don't have to do, you know, we've already been talking for a minute, but, yeah. uh, but what, what, why, why did you feel this was the career path? Oh, well, it, it has to do with publishing and music. Okay. Um, when, I, when I was a girl, all I wanted to do was be a ballet dancer. Yeah, sure, sure. That was oh, it. Sure. I was like crazed. Mm. I mean, I was obsessed. Right, sure. You know, and frankly, probably somewhat addicted, yeah. you know, to, you know, wanting to dance. That's mm. all I wanted to do. My father thought it was a ridiculous career choice yeah <laughs> but i mean i don't think it's easy but. no it's terrible yeah. but but what happened was i spent my childhood and and early adulthood um in downtown chicago mm -hmm. you know in i've told, told you about this yeah. in the fine arts building right 410 right, right, right. south michigan avenue mm -hmm. and it's 10 floors of studios of musicians dancers artists it, it's a creative environment that is just incredibly stimulating and, and inspiring. Sure. And my, my teachers were with the Royal Ballet. They came from the Royal Ballet and, you know, we had top dancers like, you know, Margot Fontaine and Rudolf Nureyev in our studio. And as a kid, when you're exposed to that level of art, it does something to you. It changes you. You know, there, there's something about, you know, the exposure to fine art that, you know, nothing, nothing matches it. Right. So, um, when I was a stockbroker, I liked, I liked the business. It was really interesting. It was fascinating. Um, and I liked the, it's pretty, the, pretty drastically different. Yeah. I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> the, it is. It's it, My family. So, you know, what are you doing? You yeah, know, and like sure. when well, I have a degree in English and computer science, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, oh. I have an English degree. So I've, you know, when I went to college, you know, I wanted to stay, you know, uh, I, I liked literature very much, mm -hmm. um, but then, you know, it, there came a point in time where I thought, all right, I have to make some money. You know, yeah. I, this is like, I, I'm not independently wealthy, and so, you know, I'm not a trust fund person, so I have to, like, figure out how to make a living. Right. So I went back to school, got a degree in, in management and computer science. Oh, okay. I didn't and know you had the computer background, I too, do. so that makes so this whole thing a little easier. But but at the time, it seemed, like, so disjointed. I see ballet dancer, yeah. you know, uh, stockbroker, you know, English literature, computer science. Mm -hmm. None of it makes any sense. Yeah. And it was strangely, it all kind of came together you know Ooh, with, so cool. with this business yeah really um, no I, I mean it is funny if you look at them all individually you can't see the connection but right the way the world evolved particularly the way it, the advent of the internet all the technology that came from that right yeah somebody's got to know both sides you right. know everybody's going to be involved in the technology yeah, including so, the arts. so every part of it that mm -hmm. that i studied mm -hmm. you know i used you know right. in this sure. business but it was not planned it's mm -hmm. just really uh completely unplanned right. you know i just floated along you know dr drifting into things that interested me and yeah, and sure. somehow or another it all came together <sighs> that's probably what a life lesson, probably, you know, drifting into things that interested <laughs> me, you know, as long as you're working hard and following your passions. Yeah. I mean, look at where you can end up, you know, president. <laughs> That's too much. Ah, well, gosh, um, I'm trying to think of a fun fact now. Some fun fact. What's your favorite hobby? Like, I well, don't know. What do you think? Like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Is it music related and perhaps barnyard it is, related? It is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so actually, it's it's like dancing, you know. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. you know. Well, so people don't know what it what is. All right. It? So, so I I'm a dressage rider. Okay. I, I ride my horse. I have two horses. You okay. Know, but okay. I, I have a very very fancy. I, I got very lucky. I don't mm -hmm. know how I got this lucky, but I have. Uh, it's just a phenomenal seven-year-old mare okay. um, that actually became uh, 
a U.S. national champion wow. dressage horse. Uh, it, it and just, so what's dressage? How's that, it, it, how's that different? It, the Olympics, if you watch the Olympics, yes. the Summer Olympics, um, there's three equestrian sports. Okay. There's um, show jumping. Okay. There's cross country. It's mm. called eventing, you know, where they, they you know, jump their horses, ah, you know, okay. across, um, you know, big courses. And then the last event is, it's called dressage, which mm. is, it's a very controlled and it's high art is really what it yeah, is. Okay. It's you, you're riding a horse almost like a dance partner. It's okay. like almost like dancing, sure. you know. So, you know, you have these tests that you do and they're very defined tests and every step is judged. You, okay. you do this as a performance in front of a judge and the judge looks at the movement and scores it from it's it's from zero to 100 oh, percent okay. and they give you a score and mm -hmm. if you get a 70 it's like con considered fabulous oh really yes that that's should have told it, my high school teachers the 70 it, really <laughs> exactly it doesn't make any sense i mean it sounds terrible but um the world record uh for dressage is only 90 93 or 94 percent Nobody wow. in the history oh of goodness. the sport has ever gotten be how, anything how, better than that. How far back does dressage go? It goes hundreds of years. Does it really? Yeah, okay. it, yeah it's so. a very old. And, it, and in oh, a way, it's wild. like riding the horse. It's like playing an instrument. I was kind of curious yeah. if there's, if there's it's, parallels. Yeah, very. it's it's a training sport. And, yeah. it's, and it's all very precise. And, and actually, there's something called a musical freestyle. Okay. And where you, you actually do these tests to music. Okay. And that's really my favorite favorite part of it because I can we can actually take the music and my background in music is such that uh, we that's where she became my horse became a national champion twice wow. with a musical freestyle sure. so we had so you're, you're guiding the horse to the beat is that kind of how that works or yeah I'm you match sure you match the movements to the music okay and you're dancing yeah basically sure. what I mean that's doing. what it sounds like you're huh. it, the horse becomes the dance partner yeah yeah that's so super there we go I'm dancing I know how cool <laughs> is that well again working here you've got access to any music you could I possibly know. Need. I know it's great it's great <laughs> so yeah so that's what I do and and you know so in in you know it's 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 just a complete getaway you know from from oh, business I bet. you I know bet. and it Keeps me, I'm getting older, keeps mm. me healthy. I suppose. I mean, if it's an Olympic sport, there's got to be some semblance of athleticism required, oh, oh, I would it's, think. Oh, it's a really difficult sport. Yeah. It's very hard. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Yeah, it's very it's very difficult, you sure. know, and um, it's it's also very artistic. So, mm -hmm. you know, in, in, in some ways, I feel like I can somewhat understand the process that a musician goes through. You know, to oh, to really create a beautiful performance. Sure. Because it's this is a very nuanced sport, and and mm -hmm. playing an instrument is a very nuanced activity. Right. So right. I can appreciate that. Is it e would it be easy enough to describe a movement? So you say there's these spe specific move. I mean, it really, I, I, it, can it be put to words, or do you need visual examples? <laughs> I, I don't understand enough about it. <laughs> oh well, well, w w there's like walk, trot, canter, and okay. then in, in in dressage collection, you what you do is you collect your horse okay. so that they. It, it's like a ballet dancer. If you've really? seen dancers, you know where they're they they have a frame, you know, or dancers yes. have a frame, yeah. Yeah, 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 and they're very light on their feet, right. and they have elevation, and and they do these beautiful movements, okay. you know, above and beyond what most people can do. It's the same. The horses do the same thing. They they're very wow. it's they're very muscular. They're like the weightlifters of sure. horses, and so they lift themselves up, and they can do pirouettes. And really? yes, they, oh yeah, gosh. it's just fabulous. It's so, so do they fun. have to train them from the point they're when do they what three years old? You start at okay. three, so it's probably full grown at least at that point. I really don't know right. much about it. It takes horses. about it takes over 10 years Are you to, to train an animal to do this. Oh my goodness, yeah, it's just like um, a ballet dancer sure. or a musician, yeah, it's a lot of hours. It really, I mean, that the connection you you that's got to be way more than just having a pet. Oh my gosh, yes. I mean, really, it's your partner. Yeah, your partner. That is wild. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I definitely feel that kind of connection with uh, musicians that I've played with. Obviously, I think there's something really interesting about it being an animal. Yes. But 
when you're playing with other musicians, all your movements, all your uh, are, are coordinated so as to to intertwine with one another to create a result. Right. So I mean, it's kind of comparable it's ex- it's in that way. It's very comparable. Yeah, extremely really comparable. Yeah, sure. Yes, sure. and there has to be. It, we call it. It's you're having a conversation. Yeah. Every step, yeah. you're having a conversation. It's you're, a big you're, term in jazz. Is it really? Yeah, yeah. Is uh, uh, you're because so much of it is improvised. You're conversing with one another. You have to listen to as uh, I'm a bass player. As a bass player, I have to listen to what the drummer is doing, and I have to work off of what the drummer is doing, and right. I have to interlock into what the drummer is doing. And he has to do the same with me. And if they're not, if one of us is off in the distance or not listening, it's not going to fit. It's right. not going to work together. Um, and then when you get deeper into it, just as an artistic venture, uh, people will solo and they'll say that they're sort of talking to one another, you know? So you, this was an interesting one in grad school. It's one of the coolest things that I learned. My, um, one of my professors had us take a, a book and take a paragraph and play a solo reading the words out loud. So we would play the solo and try to match the rhythm of our solo to the words. So if I'm going, I pledge allegiance to the flag, I'm going do 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 And I try to get the flow of the sentence and I try to utilize those rhythms. Well, then I can start doing that with my own messages in my own mind. So then I'm looking at my friend over there and I'm like, hey there, buddy, you are silly, but my best friend. You know, mm. and try to give it a musical cadence, a musical up and down to right. it. And I started listening for that more and more in uh, when listening to the masters. And I totally believe that's what they're doing. And the more in tune you get to it, it seems almost like y- you might even start think- realizing what words they're thinking in their head. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's really wild. It's very crazy. But I think it's why one of the things that makes jazz so so incredible uh, it's it's really neat it's one of the coolest that things fascinating. i learned in, learned in grad school that really. is fascinating yeah. well when when you were saying that uh, the thought that came through my mind is that everything's musical you right. could you could look at anything mm-hmm. you could experience anything and do the same thing in your mind mm-hmm. you can add you can add cadence to it you right. can add rhythm to it right. and you know now the whole world vibrates with music. Mm, well, yeah, that's when we get into the whole, yeah, exactly. Music is the universe. <laughs> I've said that for years anymore. Oh, yeah, playing jazz, you're communing with infinity. You know, right. you're, you're, fighting, <laughs> you're latching yourself onto a frequency that's there and just doing your best to organize it and there you go. try and present it to one another and blah, blah, blah. But well, this is now part we're getting of, hippie. We are we're getting <laughs> weird, but that's the fun of this business. Yeah, no, this, and that's why I love working on this. Uh, that's why, and particularly as I've gotten older, you know, I don't need to tour the way I did anymore. It's, mm-hmm. it's a long, hard road to mm-hmm. hoe kind of thing. Um, and getting to work with music new notes for music notes. I'm still here. I'm still in the industry. I'm still doing it every yeah. day. And I'm sure you probably feel the same way. You know, oh, you've, you've been involved your whole life now. It's a privilege. Right. It's a great privilege. Right. It's a privilege. And I'm very, very lucky. Yeah. Very lucky to be mm-hmm. here. No, I think we all feel pretty lucky getting to work here, really. And we all want we want to see it grow, particularly the education stuff. And with all the new repertoire we're adding, I'm really excited to see what the next couple of years bring with, with, yeah, so with am I. going there. So, aw. Well, I think we might have. Did we do we it? Might've, I think we might have done it, Kathy. We did we it. We might have pulled we it off. We did it. Thank you so much for doing <laughs> this, really. I hope we didn't peer pressure you too much. I had, how many people came at you to do this? I know. <laughs> I know. Well. It was it was okay. It good. was fun. Oh, good. I'm glad it was Thank okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a blast. Well, thanks, Kathy. We do appreciate it. You're welcome. All right. Thanks.